Today's episode of Namaste Yoga is a yoga story, Nadaranjasana, dancer pose. Welcome to episode okay, so two. Here's our blanket, excellent. Asymmetrical to right now. Dropping and sinking. Notice how the. So just notice. Joining us for the second episode of next week. Yeah. Namaste. Hello and welcome to episode 85 of Namaste Yoga. We're back on location on Lake Ontario here. We've got a very dramatic backdrop for our show today. These waves are so huge I, and they're loud. I can barely hear myself. Um, but kind of kind of great because um, today's show is about Nataranjasana, Shiva's incarnation as the cosmic dancer and Shiva, of course, being the god of destruction. So I want to thank all of you who have friended us on Facebook this week. We had a, a big jump in in, um, in likes on our fan page at Namaste Yoga. So thank you for that. And uh, continue to go to Namaste Yoga and like our page and suggest to your friends that they like it too. Also, I wanted to thank uh, the people who donated this week as well. <laughs> Um, we received some very kind donations this week, so I really appreciate that. You can go to melissawest.com to make donations to allow us to uh, continue to offer you these free weekly yoga video podcasts each week. Okay, so go ahead and rest back in Shavasana. And I will tell you the story of Nataraj to this dramatic backdrop of the uh, waves of Lake Ontario here. So Nada and Jasana, Nada means dance, Raja means king, and Asana of course means pose. And this story has to do with Shiva's avatar as a cosmic dancer. When you, you'll often see Shiva in statues depicted surrounded by a ring of fire and standing on a demon. The ring of fire is said to represent the cycles of birth and rebirth that our soul must go through before achieving enlightenment. The demon he is standing on represents the victory over ignorance and Shiva's dance is said to represent the source of all movement within the universe. So the purpose of Shiva's dance is to release our souls from the snares of illusion and it takes place at the center of the universe which is actually within our hearts. So Nataraj, Nataraj's dance represents both the destruction and creation of the universe and reveals the cycles of death, birth, and rebirth. And Shiva is said to dance his dance of bliss for the welfare of the world. So consider the cycles of birth, and rebirth, this idea of rebirthing yourself in your own life. And I know this is a major theme in my own life. It's one that comes up again and again, this idea of rebirthing and reinventing myself. So consider how it comes up in your own life. And I wonder if, for me, whenever I think about birthing and rebirthing and endings and beginnings, it kind of exhausts me. And I'm wondering if we can go into it with an intention of uh, blissful dance today, of dancing with these endings and beginnings. So that's my intention for our practice today. So you go ahead and set your own intention for what it is that you would like to receive in your practice. And while you're lying on your backs, we'll stay lying on our, our backs to begin. Okay, so Nadaranjasana requires a fair amount of openness in the fronts of your legs. We'll start by opening up the fronts of your legs. Lying on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. This is the one where you need to be really cautious of your knees again. So, um, just be careful, you want to feel it in the belly of your muscle, not in your knees. Let's take your right leg and internally rotate it. Bring your right foot up along the side of your body. 
leg away from you so that you're feeding it out of your pelvis, elongating it. Okay, and then slowly release your right leg. And bring it back to center. Let's switch sides so you'll internally rotate your left leg. Bring your left foot up along the side of your body. Lengthen your left leg long out of your pelvis. And be cautious that you're feeling it in the belly of your muscle and not in your knee. And now use as much awareness to come out of the pose. Or onto your stomach. So we're going to focus on opening up the fronts of your legs here. Um, and opening up the fronts of your hips just by doing some leg raises here. Um, but more than lifting your legs, you want to focus on lengthening your legs away from your body. So you're opening up the front of your hip right here. So press the front of your pelvis into the ground and then lengthen long through your right leg until it reaches off the ground. And height here is really not important. You want to stay long through your low back. And so if you can get your leg higher, any purpose. Remember our intention here is to open up the front of your hip. And slowly release your leg down. Wiggle your hips from side to side. There's a very loud blue jay, I think, here <laughs> joining us. I hope I'm not perched under his nest, under her nest. <laughs> It'll be a lo even louder show. Okay, press the front of your pelvis into the ground. You lengthen long through your left leg. And slowly release your legs and wiggle your pelvis from side to side again and let's just have a your low back by coming up and back into child's pose to stretch your low back definitely blue jays with us today
Okay, and then make your way back down onto your belly. We're gonna do quite a few things on your belly here, actually. Um, remember that frog pose we did a few weeks ago? We're gonna work with that again. So take your arms in front of you, press the front of your pelvis into the ground, walk your elbows back underneath you, and just swing your left arm across to your right shoulder. You're gonna bend your right leg, and this is the one where you're gonna reach around and hold onto your foot and draw it towards the outside of your hip. So this is the one where your hand should ideally be like this, but we're just gonna do the best that, that we can. Okay, and release the side and just rest here for a moment and wiggle your hips. Okay, and then let's do the other side. So arms come in front again. Walk your take your right arm across. Bend your left knee, reach around and hold on to your left foot, drawing your left heel towards the outside of your left hip. Okay, and then release that posture from Come up and back into child's pose. Whew. Okay, and then you're gonna come up and forward and back down onto your belly. Okay, and then this one, you're going to bend your right knee. Reach around, if you can reach, hold on to your right ankle and draw your right heel towards your buttocks to, to stretch out the front of your right thigh. Press the front of your pelvis into the ground. Open up the front of your hip here. And then wiggle your hips. And let's do this on your left side as well. Bend your left knee. Keep the front of your pelvis dropping into the ground. Draw your left heel towards your buttocks. Keep your left leg in line with your body, so make sure your knee's not traveling out to the left side. All fours and come back into the child's pose again. Rest your low back.
So when you do yoga outside, you have to share your mat with lots of little critters. <laughs> this is a nice little ant. They can bite. <laughs> okay, come up onto all fours. Here's another little one, a nice little green bug. Okay, and you're going to exhale and round up through your back. And then inhale and arch your back. So warming up your spine. If this is bothering your wrists at all, then come on to fists. Moving with breath. Oh. Can you see the family of robins over there? Can you do a little, can you reach them too far? Oh, they're moving closer for you. <laughs> okay, so let's do lunge pose. I'm gonna get you to walk your hands back to your knees and walk your left leg forward for lunge pose. I think that ant did bite me. <laughs> yeah. So really focus here on opening up the front of your leg. And then you're going to come upright. And here you want to be far enough forward so that you're not right on your kneecap. You're going to lift your back knee and hold on to your back leg. So you can always put a blanket underneath your back knee here too. That would really help. And then slowly release that. Ooh, those little ant bites hurt. <laughs> and let's switch sides. So walk your right leg through lunge pose and we'll hold here. So consider the cycles of life, uh, death, birth, rebirth in your own life. And notice how that even though those transitions can be really scary, how they can actually really serve you. And they don't have to be big, huge, dramatic deaths and rebirths. Um, they can be small ones too. Okay, so sink down through your front right foot. You're gonna come upright. Bend your back left knee. And hold on to your back left foot. I think I'm on a rock here. Find a little softer spot for that. That's better. Okay, all right, so from here we're going to do pigeon pose. So come back into downward facing dog and we'll make our way in, into pigeon. Okay, so downward facing dog. Take your right leg back and up, give it a shake. And then bend your right leg through. You want your hips to be square here 
and fold forward over your bent right leg. So careful that this leg stays in line here. Your leg can be really bent, and if this pose bothers you at all, you can bring you can actually bring your leg right up underneath you. Okay, be careful of your knee here. Listen to your own body, and then fold forward over your bent right leg. Wow, that's pretty impressive. After all that, kind of for me at least, agonizing hip opening. This pigeon feels pretty darn easy. So in the story, Shiva's dance takes place in the center of the universe, which is our heart. So tuck your tail under and let's lift our hearts here. And then tuck your back left toe under and lift your knee up off the ground so that you're opening up through the front of your left hip here. And then you can release that back leg, swing off the pose a little bit and come back in, hold on to your back left leg. So you're opening up through the front of your left leg again. Okay, and release. I just got bit again. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> All right, let's step back into downward facing dog. And take your left leg back. Oh, here's one of the, here's one of the culprits. Oh, it's a himsa, except for the the bugs that are, are biting you, right? <laughs> oh, kindness towards all living beings. Take your left leg up and bring your left leg through. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Fold forward over your left leg. I'm trying to think of some way that this this ties into our story of today. I, I'm, I'm not seeing it right now. Okay, then tuck your tail under and lift your heart, the center of the universe. And then you can tuck your back right toes under and lift your knees so that you're opening up through the front of your right leg. And then lower that down and shift back a little bit so you can bend your back leg and lift up again.
Okay, and then release this pose from your body. And we're going to make our way up to standing. So come through downward facing dog. And then make your way slowly up to standing. So as we stood up, we noticed that there are three white swans coming across here. Um, probably heading over to Lynn Shores, the conservation area just e uh, east of us. So three swans, like the trinity that we worked with last week, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and also works with the theme that we're working with today, uh, Brahma being creation and birth, Vishnu being life, the preservation, and Shiva being death and destruction. So this cycle of birth and rebirth uh, pattern in nature here with us. Okay, let's roll our shoulders back and down. And then internally rotate your left arm. Bring your left arm up your back and bring your right arm up and over. Maybe it'll touch, maybe not, doesn't really matter. And then you can release that side, shoulders back and down again. And this time, internally rotate your right arm and bring it up here back. And if you're at all like me, this side is probably a little tighter. And then reach your left arm up and over. Maybe they meet, maybe they don't. Okay, and then release that pose from your body. Roll your shoulders back and down again. I'm gonna get you to stand on one foot, balance on one foot, and bend the other knee. Reach around and hold on to your ankle and have your right knee pointing straight down. So your task here is to line up both your legs and open up the front of your hip just to stretch out the front of your thigh before we do Naranjasana, king dancer pose. You can take your arm out to the side for balance. I got a little wet on that one. And then release this side from your body. You shake your leg out a little bit. And then let's do that on your other side as well. So standing on one foot, bending the opposite leg, reaching around, holding onto your ankle, pointing your knee straight down, dropping your tail, lifting your heart. I'm watching those swans make their pilgrimage. That's a long trip for them. I think they're going to be tired by the time they get there.
Okay, and then release this pose from your body. Roll your shoulders back and down again. And interlace your fingers behind your back. Lift your chest. Lift your arms. Keep your tail tucked. Lift your heart center. And then slowly release it from your body. Okay, so are you ready to try Nadaranjasana pose, King Dancer? I'm going to teach this the way my teacher Tama Sobol um, from Esther Myers taught me this pose. You're going, um, so sometimes people do this pose standing upright. That's the way that I was taught it. But I've also seen people tip it. We're going to do the upright version today. Stand on your left leg. Bend your right knee. Hold on to your right ankle if you can reach. If not, hold on to your right foot. Roll your right shoulder back and down. Tuck your tail. Left arm extends. Inhale. Exhale. You're going to pull your heel away from your buttocks. And that action of pulling your heel back will open your chest here. And then slowly release this side from your body. And let's do that on your other side. So this time you'll stand on your right foot. Bend your left knee. Reach down, hold on to your ankle if you can reach the top of your foot if you can't. Tuck your tail under. Roll your left shoulder back and down. Inhale here. Exhale, draw your heel away from your buttocks. That will pull your arm back and open your chest. Great. And then slowly release this from your body. Take your feet wide on your mat. You're going to inhale here and exhale. Hinge forward from your hips. Do a well-deserved forward fold here. Okay, so slowly come up and you're gonna make your way down onto your mat and lie down on your stomach. So we're going to do the shape of Nadaranjasana on your belly too with a half bow pose. Take your hands out in front of you, ground the front of your pelvis into the ground. Bend your right knee. Reach around and hold on to your right ankle or your foot, the top of your foot if you can't reach your ankle. Um, you can always use a strap here as well. Roll your right shoulder back and up. Inhale. Exhale. Pull your heel away from your buttocks. 
to lift your body up. And then slowly lower yourself down. Slowly release. So paying attention to the creation, the life, and the death of the pose. All pieces of the posture. Just as you become aware of those transitions and supporting yourself in those transitions in your life. Okay, let's do the other side. Tuck your tail under. Bend your left knee. Reach around and hold on to your left ankle. Roll your left shoulder back and up. Inhale, exhale, pull yourself up by moving your left heel away from your buttocks. And then slowly lower down. Release this posture from your body by pushing yourself up onto all fours. And back into child's pose. Okay, slowly make your way up to sitting and bring your legs out in front of you. You're gonna sit with your legs straight in front of you and lengthen up through your spine. So, staff pose here. And then you're going to bend your right knee Place your right foot on the ground, lengthen up tall through your spine. Wrap your left arm around your right leg, turn towards it, and lengthen up through your spine. And then come back center, release your right leg, bend your left leg in, lengthen up through your spine again, wrap your right arm around your left leg, turn towards it, use your hand at the base of your spine to lengthen it up. Okay, and come back center. So I'm gonna give you two choices here. This is the option of this, if this leg position doesn't work for your body. You can always do Janusarsasana legs, nice and tall, and fold forward here. Okay, if this isn't an issue at all for your legs, you're gonna internally rotate your right leg and place it on the ground. Inhale here, spine nice and tall. Exhale and fold forward.
Okay, so come on up. Let's switch legs. And so Shiva, as Nataraj, invites us to let go of the illusions of our imperfections, the imperfections in the world. Lengthen up nice and tall through your spine. Exhale and fold forward. And to focus by doing that dance in our heart, he allows us to see our true self, our true essence, the perfection of our soul, which in turn will allow us to achieve enlightenment. And through the Nadarajasana, the dance of destruction, we know that these acts of destruction in our life, these really serve a bigger purpose for us to be rebirthed, reborn again, even better than before. Come into child's pose. We're going to finish with child's pose today. And then roll up through your spine and come to a seated position. And we'll sit with a, mudra, a Shiva Mudra to finish our practice. And take your left hand and make a base for your Mudra. And then take your right hand and do the thumbs up pose. Rest it on your left hand. So this is the Shiva. Shiva Linga Mudra and it's supposed to be really good for energy And really, by being here on Lake Ontario and hearing those waves crashing into the shore, each wave that comes in invites us to invite destruction into our lives so that we can celebrate those endings, those deaths, releasing which no longer serves us in order to invite the rebirth allowing space for something new and better to unfold.
and take a deep breath and consider where you can invite in Shiva's dance of destruction into your life what's something that's no longer serving you and where can you bring the buoyancy and joy of dance into releasing that Bring your hands to prayer position. Thank you for joining us for episode 85 of Namaste Yoga, Narva Jasana, the King Dancer Pose. Find us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, and thank you all for your donations at melissawest.com. They really help us to make this podcast possible for you each week. Namaste.